A couple of months ago, at one of the traveling think tanks that my organization hosts in Virginia, I talked about my desire to open up a residential academy for black boys. And during one of our discussion sessions in Norfolk, Virginia, several of the brothers and sisters there began to state different, the names of different colleges and treatment centers that they thought could be used for such purposes. St. Paul's College was one of the institutions that was brought up during the discussion. This was probably almost a year ago. We began calling and emailing the college, attempting to determine whether or not the college was in fact up for sale. We got no responses. And then suddenly, about two months ago, I get a text message from one of the brothers there in Virginia who said, Umar, the school is going up for auction next week. I couldn't believe it. I said, how can this be when we've been trying to get in contact with them for months? So I rushed and I sent the email to the realty company that was representing the college. And I was successful in being able to get a hold of the president of the college. And I expressed to them my intent to turn this college into the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy for Boys. The president was pretty sympathetic. He expressed to me that they wanted to sell the college to someone who would be true to the vision of the founder, James Solomon Russell. My vision to educate black children was directly in line with Ancestor Russell's vision. So naturally, I think there was a degree of interest in my campaign. However, the school does have bills and did have bills at the time. And I was assured that if I couldn't raise the money, they would potentially have to sell it to someone who was not necessarily interested in keeping the focus of the campus on education. And so they basically gave me the right to use the school's name to fundraise and campaign, which I've been doing. Our fundraiser began on May 20th. And so this Friday will be exactly 31 days. So I guess we're at the 27th or 28th day now. Uh, we haven't yet broken $100,000 yet. Um, I don't want to be too judgmental of the community. Um, because they were not given enough time to really prepare themselves financially to try to do this. One of the pleasant lessons that I've learned during this 30 day fundraising experience is that I have a lot of support from people I did not know supported my work. I have a lot of very silent, very reserved people who support my work, elders, middle class, working class, brothers and sisters from the hood who may not have even ever met me, but support my work. And most of the checks and most of the PayPal donations came from my silent supporters. Most of the people who know me, who pack out my lectures, um, most of them did not contribute to the campaign. The higher education African Americans who have reached out to me. I've gotten several very positive emails from chancellors, uh, vice presidents of student affairs, uh, chairs of departments, deans of students on the university level and on the uh, grade school level who have reached out. So members of the intellectual uh, elite, if you would, you know, some of them have really reached out and shown some support. Obviously, they can't do it out in front because of my unapologetically African uh, stance. I'm as uh, politically incorrect as you can get. Um, but I do like the fact that they've been sending me words of encouragement as well as their donations. So I've, I've forged a lot of very useful uh, relationships. I mean, if you look at the economic spending habits of black people in America, we spend more than two and a half million dollars a day. So with eight days to go, we still have more than enough time
to raise this money. So I'm not giving up. Um, I can't. Our black boys require that I stay optimistic and positive about this campaign. And so I'm continuing to beat the street. I'm continuing to make the phone calls. I was speaking today at a graduation here in Southwest Philadelphia where one of the pastors came up to me and said he's going to do what he can to get the word out amongst the African Methodist Episcopal Church um, congregational movement. Another brother told me he had some phone calls he needed to make. So I have a lot of people pulling for me and I wouldn't want to give the impression that it's anything other than that. Uh, the community at large, yes, because there's still a lot of people who don't know who I am. Um, as traveled as I am, as storied as I am, as so-called controversial as people try to make me to be, there's still a lot of our people who don't know me. So we just have to continue to spread the word. But again, I want to underscore that I've received tremendous support. I mean, every day I go to the post office, there's at least a dozen mail-in donations. Um, you know, I've gotten over 100 checks already. Uh, PayPal, every time I check the account, there's been another donation being made. So I want to make sure, you know, that our brothers and sisters in the community know that I see that they're trying to help me and I see that they're doing all they can. I've had people who have literally donated every other day during this campaign. I have one sister, um, Sister Acosta, who I don't believe I've ever met physically. Literally, I get a check from her every three or four days, literally. Um, I have one brother out of London who's making a donation every three or four days from London on PayPal. So I have tremendous support. It's just that from the people who claim to be about this type of work, the support hasn't been there from that small so-called conscious community. Um, unlike other people who do it for money, I don't speak for money. I speak to raise the consciousness and to motivate our people so that when initiatives like this are undertaken, they will be there financially. So my goal for speaking isn't to get paid. That's not my goal. So I really have to rethink my priorities in 2015, whether or not I want to keep sacrificing uh, four and five days out of every week to try to motivate people who really aren't reciprocating the commitment that I'm making. So I'm assuming that when you go out and lecture, you're also using yourself as a fundraiser in and of itself. Yes, uh, yes. I think a lot of people don't understand what goes into being a public speaker. Um, I don't think they understand the wear and tear physically, psychologically, mentally. I love what I do. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I love it uh, to help people through oratory. I love it. But I also thought that in doing this, I was making an investment so that when the time came for people to reciprocate, they would. And they have from the larger black community. As I always say, my backbone is not the conscious community. It's the black community. And I really have no criticism for them. They've come through. You know, they've come through. You know, for example, you know, if I look here, uh, Brother Solomon from Palm Bay, Florida, $500 donation. Um, also, we have the CAAAE group out of San Jose, California, $1,000 donation. Sister Itania out of Boston, $300 donation. Um, we also have Brother Keith out of Maryland, $200 donation. Um, we have um, Sister Jessica out of Lancaster, Texas, uh, $1,000 donation. Brother Darren out of D.C., $200 donation. Anonymous donation of $155. Sister Linda out of Milwaukee, $1,000 donation. Uh, Brother Stephen out of Charlotte, $250 donation. Uh, here's another sister, Rianosa, Bronx, New York, $300 donation. Mrs. Grace from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, $150 donation. Uh, Brother Stevenson out of uh, Lucy, Florida, St. Lucy, Florida, $300 donation. Brother Brian of uh, Vallejo, California, $200 donation. Uh, Sister Shebra, Newark, New Jersey, $200 donation. Uh, Miss Samantha Acosta out of Georgia, she's been sending me a donation literally like every other day. She's giving 
uh, nearly 200, if not more dollars. Uh, Sister Nancy out of Queens, New York, $200 donation. Brother John, excuse me, the United African Movement, including Brother John, $200 donation. PIAC out of Newberry, South Carolina. I think that's my brother Kwame and company. $200 donation. Sister Anitra out of Mississippi, $500 donation. Brother Lester out of Chicago, $1,000 donation. Petrosia out of uh, Brooklyn, $300 donation. So they've been coming in. Um, and so far, this is just the checks. 131 checks of money orders. On PayPal, I'm sure we've received uh, a couple of hundred donations so far. Donations range from $1 up to $1,000. I haven't had a donation more than $1,000 yet. Okay, your smallest do donation was how much? $1. And I respect that because some of our people are in such financial straits that that's all they can give. And I know for them to only give me a dollar meant that they really ain't even have that to give, but they found a way to do it because donating a dollar on PayPal costs you more than a dollar. The transaction fee, you know, is a couple of dollars. So whether it's a dollar or a thousand dollars, you know, I really want to say thank you. A deep thank you to everyone who's donated to the campaign. And again, most of them are silent supporters. Almost none of those names I gave to you are members of the conscious community. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback just to read some of the notes that have been included with some of the donation checks that I've received. Dr. Johnson, thank you for all you're doing. I plan to send more later on. Every little bit counts. I'm going to start a Facebook campaign for brothers to save their spare change and donate it to the academy. If there's anything else I can do, help me, uh, let me know. Greetings, Dr. Johnson, keep going strong. Your words and knowledge. Africans, those of us in America need to hear and face the truth. This isn't about attacking religion because regardless of what you believe, we as a people still have to work together. I am African, not because I was born in Africa, but because Africa was born in me. Our unity is more powerful than an atomic bomb. I'm a follower of Minister Farrakhan and we agree on many things. So in the spirit of true brotherhood and love for our people, I wish you success. That came from a brother from uh, the Nation of Islam sending me some support. Dr. Johnson, I'm honored to give you a donation for the school. I wish I could give more, but I have a wedding to pay for, but I do plan to send more later on. Dr. Johnson, thank you for your hard work and determination. I have met a lot of conscious brothers and sisters, but you are the greatest. I can see the blood of Frederick Douglass in you and your speeches. I can see Marcus Garvey's spirit in your base in your organizational skills and building platform. Keep up the good and mighty work. Our master teachers and all African people, as I make my first donation, I hope to be a philanthropist for the Pan-African movement. Good day, Dr. Johnson. I wanna make a small donation towards your acquisition of the school. Uh, this is from a sister out of Washington, DC. I hope you reach your goal. I hope you get that beautiful campus so we can have a place for our young brothers and sisters. Thanks for all of your hard work. I will be on the lookout for updates. Dr. Johnson, let me applaud you for your vision and dedication. I just learned about you through the diverse issues in higher education news. I went to your website and discovered the wonderful work. This is a small donation, but I will do my part to help spread the words. I support your goals. Stay strong. I'm praying that you get the resources you need for your school. And then the last one I'll read, and I have much, much more. I'm excited about the school you're endeavoring to build. Please find my resume enclosed. I'm interested in being of service to you and our youth. Please keep me informed about the progress that you are making. If I can be of help in any way, please contact me. So I've been getting these every day, emails, Facebooks, tweets, texts, Instagrams, WhatsApps, you name it. Again, I am very, very humbled and honored by the support that I have gotten from the overall black community. Had it not been for them, we wouldn't have even been as successful as we are. Uh, it's only been 27 days. And in 27 days, you know, we're still under $100,000, but we're not far from it either, you know? And so I have to say that most people would be satisfied 
to do that well in 27 days. And so I should not be so eager and so impatient to not recognize that my people really did come through for me, even if I'm not successful in getting to school on Wednesday. What we do need, we've already received resumes for those, not to mention my own inner circle of educators. So in terms of the staffing, we're fine. Operating the school is the least of my worries. That's what I look forward to. That's going to be the best part, getting them children in there and giving them an education that nobody else has given them. Um, and please, people, stop asking me to do a homeschool. I'm not interested in no homeschool. We need institutions. I commend those people who are doing homeschools, but that's a Band-Aid. I'm looking for a solution. We need institutions. We need infrastructure. You know, opening my house to 30 kids and teaching them, that's good. But that's not what we need. We need institutions with infrastructure for our children where we can educate, you know, hundreds of them and begin to socialize them together and reacculturate them. I'm not interested in a homeschool. I commend those people who are doing that, but that's not enough for me. We need real schools, not homeschools. What I'm doing is I am formulating a database so when the time comes for me to start hiring staff and faculty, I will already have a database of expertise. And so when it's time to start tapping into people's experience and um, training levels and aptitude, and when it's time to start interviewing for key positions in all positions, I won't have to go putting out help wanted signs. I will already have a database of African people who I can tap into. So you and, have to put it out there. Oh yes, it's out there. Resumes. We've received over 200 resumes, over 200 resumes, which is quite ambitious. Of course, I need everyone who sent a resume to make a donation to the school before Wednesday. Um, because obviously people who have donated, they will be given a degree of preference when it comes to hiring and when it comes to admitting children into our school because they went above and beyond the call of duty and I'm going to make sure that they are honored. Um, I'm going to have some sort of a honorary system for people who donate and because they make up the first wave of donors uh, when the St. Paul's campaign closes I want to make sure that they are honored. So when FDMG is open, whether it's at St. Paul's or at another location, I'm going to make sure that I honor these people, whether they gave a dollar or a thousand dollars in trying to help me to achieve this goal in such a short span of time. And for those who gave above and beyond, there will be extra a reward for those who gave the 500s and gave the thousand dollar donations. I want to give them an extra special thank you because they didn't have to do that. They went above and beyond the call of duty in writing out 500 and thousand dollar checks. And these came from individuals, by the way. These are not organizational checks. You know, they came from individuals. And so for somebody to care enough about what I'm doing and care enough about the future of black boys to give me a thousand dollars, money don't come easy for black people. Definitely not in these economic times. So I'm going to make sure I honor each and every one of them, whether they gave a dollar or a thousand. But for those who gave above, who gave five hundred dollars and above, I want to give them a special token of appreciation. I've gotten a couple of uh, the uh, C-A-A-A-E organization. They have donated. Um, I want to thank them for that. The P-A-I-C organization out of Newberry, South Carolina, they've donated. The African Methodist Episcopal Church of Tulsa, Oklahoma, they gave one of the first donations. Uh, the United African Movement, led by Queen Mother Leola and attorney at war Alton Maddox, they donated. So I did receive a couple of organization checks and I'm leaving out a few. We probably gotten uh, about a handful of organization checks, um, less than what I should have gotten because I've helped a lot of organizations out in my 15 years of speaking. I've done a lot of free work and there's a lot of people I've really helped out who didn't donate. Are there any types of individuals or organizations that you would not accept monies from? For example, let's say an organization wants to invest in your school, meaning that they want to perhaps own a percentage or even... I'm not giving any so. ownership. Uh, and invest, I have to be careful with that. Because if someone wants to invest in my school with a capitalistic uh, intent, meaning I want to put in to get back, I want to make money off your school, this is not the place for that. I'm not opening this school to get rich. 
it's going to be a not-for-profit academy, not a for-profit academy. I'm not doing this to swell my pockets or the pockets of anyone else. So if you want to invest philanthropically without no expectation of return, I'm looking for those kind of investors. That's what these donations have been. These are people who are investing philanthropically because their payoff for helping me isn't going to be monetarily, it's going to be spiritually. And it's going to be in seeing the next generation of African boys being properly educated and prepared for this racist society that they have to live among. So that's going to be their payoff. But someone who's looking to make money off the school, I'm not interested in that type of investment. So those that donate to the school, are the donations tax deductible? Not at this point. Uh, once we are tax deductible, which hopefully should be by the time tax season comes around, most of them should be able to retroactively write off the amount that they donated or some portion of that. Uh, but again, you know, and I say this respectfully, we can't only do things expecting to get something back. I've had several people contact me. I want to donate, but I want to make sure I can get it off my taxes. Keep your donation. I'm looking for people who are trying to sacrifice. We are at war as a people, and there's a war against our boys. So if you're telling me you're not going to donate unless you can get some forgiveness on your taxes, don't donate. That's not the type of energy I'm looking for. I'm not going to beg anybody to do what they should be doing. I should not have to sell a school for black boys. It is self-explanatory and in your face every day what's being done to black boys. And I've had a couple of people say they want to donate, but only if they can you know, get it written off on their taxes. And these are not people who are trying to donate a million dollars or even a thousand dollars, you know, which is interesting because a lot of the criticism I've gotten, and I haven't gotten much criticism, but as you know, I have my share of detractors. They're all over. Um, I have idiots out there who will do anything they can to undermine what I do. Some of them are also speakers in the conscious community, so-called conscious community, who always have things to say. Um, I'm not without those detractors. And it's interesting because the people who are detracting and questioning what is he doing with the money, are we sure he isn't stealing it, they haven't donated anything. So you do get those kinds of questions, those queries? A couple, but it's, compared to the support, it's almost not even worth mentioning. But yes, you know, there's been a couple people, not many who've questioned, you know, this brother might be, you know, doing something with the money he's not supposed to. Well, if your check is being made to FDMG Academy, and if there's account, an account for FDMG Academy, and if it's a federal crime to misappropriate resources, it's a federal crime. That is a felony to misappropriate resources. The last thing I'm worrying about is some jealous, conscious community so-called scholar who's saying negative things about me when I know that the IRS and the state is already watching me because I am the most unapologetically of all the speakers in this country, hands down, um, and I'm probably their chief concern. I'm quite sure they're watching my bank account. They're looking at every check. So I have far more to be concerned about from my enemy than I have to do about it from a, than I have from a bunch of reactionary Negroes. So you're not concerned about um, someone challenging you on the validity of your school or whether your funds are going to be misappropriated or anything like well, that? Well, the proof is in the pudding. You know, as I said, everything's traceable. I mean, there's an account for the school. The checks are going to the school. Um, when people misappropriate, most of the time what they do is they write expenses in the school's name for things that are not related to the school. This is a fundraiser. So there shouldn't be no money coming out of the account because I don't have any bills for the school because we don't have a physical school yet. So if I was taking out a check, to get something done, okay, I would, I would expect some questions. Like, why do you, what are you spending this fundraising money on? You don't even have a school yet. So the money is only going into the account. There's nothing coming out of the account because we don't have a school yet. You, you, you see, so um, I don't mind the questions because I'm not a crook or a thief, but it does bother me because we have had black leaders who have robbed us blind and they never get these questions. We got black churches who rob us blind every Saturday, Sunday, not every church, but many of them, they don't get these questions. You know, so it's interesting that I would get these questions with a track record that I have of, of being honest and giving so much of my free time for stuff that other people charge tens of thousands of dollars for. But again, it's only been a few people. And most of the people who have 
uh, scrutinized. What am I doing with this money? Even though I have a website, even though there's a video, even though uh, we're in the process of getting all paperwork that needs to be done, done. Um, most of them are enemies anyway, so it, it doesn't really matter. What about, just change gears for a bit, this is a big undertaking and no one person can do it all on their own. Now I'm assuming that you have a team that's helping you with this. Can you speak to that? How's your team coming along? How are they feeling about the, the fundraising process, etc.? Well, I mean, I have people who are out there doing they can, doing all they can to get as many donations as we can. Um, but we're optimistic. I'm going to remain optimistic. I can't quit, you know, on our boys. Um, this was an extravagant undertaking, but it was realistic. Black people gross a trillion dollars every year in the American economy. A $5 million campaign for people who gross a trillion, for people who spend over $295 billion on clothes every year. What's five million? The asking price at the auction on Wednesday is two and a half million. What's two and a half million to people who spend more than that on alcohol and cigarettes? It's nothing. So was it, was it extravagant? From the perspective that our people have their priorities out of order, it was kind of extravagant. But from the perspective that we clearly have it within our economic capability to help Dr. Umar raise this money, it wasn't extravagant at all. And we still have the time. I'm not giving up. But with the money that has been collected, it will automatically be, be redirected into the next fundraiser. I'm, I'm looking at other campuses, other colleges. You know, nothing stops. I always have several irons in the fire. I'm looking at some property in Jersey. I'm looking at uh, some things in Philadelphia. You know, I'm looking at some things in Detroit. You know, so we'll continue and all of that money will be redirected to whatever property we attempt to acquire. The fundraiser won't stop. It will be redirected from St. Paul's. But the fundraiser will continue, and I want everyone to hear that. The fundraiser will continue. Don't use Wednesday as an excuse to stop giving, okay? Because we don't even have a million dollars yet. If I had a million dollars, I could start looking at some of the schools for sale in the inner cities of uh, Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia that has had, you know, the most massive public school closings. If I had a million, I'm nowhere near that. We don't even have $100,000 yet. So we got to keep on going. Once I get to a million, I'm going to start looking at the inner city schools, uh, Detroit, Chicago, and Philadelphia in particular, because you have the most to choose from, you know, but we're going to keep on going. There's a residential school I'm considering in New Jersey. I'm trying to get some information on that. We're looking at that. So we're not going to stop. It's just that the fundraiser will stop being about St. Paul's, but we'll continue to be about raising several million dollars so Dr. Umar Johnson can acquire a property for our boys. I would love for it to be residential, but if it has to be a traditional school, so be it. I can only do what the people allow me to do. Now, this has brought a lot of attention to this type of school being needed throughout the country. Are you afraid that someone with deep pockets, for lack of a better word, may steal your idea and use of it course. for their own benefit? No one was thinking about purchasing St. Paul's before May the 20th when my fundraiser started. Nobody. The school was vacant for a year. Nobody. As soon as my video goes up, all of a sudden, black people and white people started coming out of the woodworks, detracting from my effort, Negroes as well, detracting from my effort uh, to try to purchase the school before I could. And now, as you know, the greatest threat now to the St. Paul's campaign for my purposes is that there's a government agency who's looking to use it as a school for immigrant children. Um, I don't even know if these are African immigrant children. I don't know who they are. They wasn't thinking about doing this until they saw my video. I popularized St. Paul's for sale, but I had no control over that. I knew that once I put that video up, a lot of people who were not thinking about it would, and some only for the sole purpose of keeping it from me. What's the last date for donations, I believe? There is no last date. Um, and let me say this, there is no last date. St. Paul's goes to auction on June 25th, but St. Paul's went to auction back in May. Remember, I visited St. Paul's after the last auction because they didn't get the price that they were looking for. They didn't get the interest that they were looking for. So it's a good possibility 
that if that government agency does not buy that school, if they don't produce that two and a half million, then guess what? The school is still available, which is why I'm saying I don't want people to stop donating on Wednesday. Keep on donating because I have a direct line of communication to the president of the college and I have a direct line of communication to the realty company. So if it's not sold, and I will know that, the very next day I'm going to get in contact with them and say, did y'all sell that campus at the auction? Was there a bid that was acceptable? You see, and if it wasn't, guess what? We still have time. Remember, the school been closed for a year. So I don't know if there's going to be people jumping for joy on Wednesday, June the 25th, to buy a college in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by an African-American community. So it's just another auction date. They've had previous auction dates. The fight must go on. Keep on donating. Because guess what? If they don't get it, they're going to do what? Set another auction date 30 to 60 days from now. And maybe 30 to 60 days from now, we'll have the two and a half million. So don't stop. And if they do sell the school, don't stop. I'm looking. Let's look a little bit further down the not too distant future. Let's say you acquire the college, then what? If I acquire the college in August, we should be ready with a couple of grades that we can start in next August of 2015. We won't be able to have the college fully operable from pre-K to 12, which is my vision, pre-K to 12 elementary school, but we will be able to start somewhere between fourth and the seventh grade. I'm confident of that. If we get that campus this summer, we will be open next summer with a couple of grades operating. I can guarantee that. Um, many people consider one of my strengths the fact that people can relate to me on an individual level, that I'm not arrogant, I'm a very humble guy, although my oratory might not appear to be that way, anybody can come up to me and have a conversation. Um, that's one of the strengths that I've been told I have. I'm very personable. You can text my cell phone and talk to me, no go-between. However, it does have its downsides. Uh, people who don't necessarily mean me or my work any good, they also have that direct access. Also, members of my security team are concerned that I'm giving people too much direct access, not in terms of reputation, because I'm not concerned about what the public thinks of me, but in terms of my own personal safety. So I'm probably going to have to change some things up as we go forward. And once we do have the school, I won't be able to allow people direct access to me anymore because I'm gonna to have to preserve the image and name of the school and I don't want people saying, I heard directly from Dr. Umar X, Y, and Z when that wasn't the case. So I'm gonna to have to cut that off, not because I want to, but I'm gonna to have to, because we have some very, very negative people um, in the so-called conscious community who would love to hurt my work. Dr. Johnson, with all of this being said, you are still single, correct? Yes, I'm still single. How has that impacted your um, life with regards to building the school, doing the lectures? Because let's face it, a woman can be the heart and the soul of a man. She can lead him to great things, but she can also tear him down mm -hmm. if she's not the right woman. So mm -hmm. you being single, how has that affected you? And do you get approached by women often? I get approached by women. I think it comes with the territory. Uh, women, I think, are naturally attracted to men who exude a certain type of aura. I've been told I have a very Shango-type personality. Uh, they like men who are in the forefront, who are powerful, who are leaders, who are organizers, um, who are educated, uh, who can take care of them financially. So I kind of meet all those requirements. But the problem is I'm not necessarily looking for a woman who's looking for a man who just has that. I'm looking for the type of sister who could be a freedom fight. I always joke that if I could somehow turn Winnie Mandela back to 40 years old, I would marry Winnie Mandela. I think Winnie Mandela would be the perfect mate for me. She would be courageous enough to stand by my side. She would be able to fight with me. She would be able to fight for me. She would be able to very sophisticatedly and professionally, professionally deal with any detractions. Uh, Winnie Mandela, she, she's beautiful, 
physically. Uh, she would definitely keep my attention that way. She's beautiful intellectually, spiritually. Uh, she hates white supremacy as much as I do, and she would die for her principles. I haven't run into a lot of women who would die for their principles. I haven't run into a lot of women who actually have the principles of Pan-Africanism as embedded on their heart as I have. Um, obviously, there's a lot of great black women out there, a lot of good sisters in the conscious community. Uh, no doubt, most of our sisters are marriage worthy. No question about that, those with children and those without children. But I think sometimes they're more drawn to me for uh, what I am and not who I am. I also tend to get an abundance of women who want to develop a relationship with me, but they're too afraid to stand in public and say, I support this man, which means you can't be with me because I can't be with a cowardly woman. So I'll get females who will send me private messages of support. I hope you get the money for the school. But then when I look at their website or their social network page, they haven't reposted a single one of my school advertisements for the whole campaign. I have women who are interested in me who haven't once advertised the fundraiser to their network of friends. How in the hell can you be interested in me and you're doing nothing to help me achieve a goal that you know is central to who I am and what my destiny is all about? So I ain't been doing too good in that department. I'm at the age I'll be 40. God will in August the 21st. I'm not going to lie. I'm at that age where I would want to come home to my queen. I'm there. But I don't really see marriage in the foreseeable future. I thought I did. But at 40, I'm going to have to do a lot of reflecting. I don't know. If it comes, it comes. But the ancestors are going to have to put it in my lap. I ain't looking no more. I'm kind of um, tired of looking. I'm not finding what I like. I'm not finding what I need either. I'm finding a lot of... Uh, people who can put on a real good revolutionary mask to get my attention. But when I get to know them, you're really not about the people. You just wanted someone who was popular for you to be able to stand with and embellish your ego. So marriage ain't at the top of list of priorities for me right now. I am going to cut back on the amount of speaking I do and limit it only to people who have shown me support if they know me. If they don't know me, I'm going to need to scrutinize the request to make sure it's not being generated purely out of a desire to make money off my name um, and to make sure that they are serious about helping our people. Um, up until now, if you call me, you wanted me to speak, I'm there. That's the type of brother I am. I like to help people, but that can be used against you because people can take your kindness for weakness and I have been taken advantage of by a lot of people over the past 15 years and especially the past four years. So I'm going to cut back. That doesn't mean people won't be able to get me to speak when 2015 uh, runs around. I can't cut back now. I got a full roster for the fall and winter and more requests coming in. So people can still request me to speak, but I'm going to look at each request and say, is this a person who's bringing me because they really want to do something for black people? Are they doing something for black people? And if they are, I'm coming. If it's someone who I've known for a while, who hasn't helped my fundraiser in any way, shape, or form, I'm not coming. Because you know me too well to have stood on the sidelines during this campaign. I'm not speaking for them or with them. For people I don't know, they still have an opportunity to prove themselves to me as to whether or not I need to be wasting my time. Bottom line, I don't want to be wasting my time traveling to places giving my heart and soul on that stage, because I give my heart and soul when I speak. I'm giving you my life energy on that stage. I'm not giving my life energy anymore to individuals or organizations who ain't reciprocating back or who are not serious about helping our people. If you're just doing this for edutainment purposes, count me out. <laughs>I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported me. All of you who have sent in the PayPal donations, please don't stop. Keep on going. All the checks, all of you are going to receive thank you notices. I have to send that to you because you've been so, so supportive of me. Uh, the $500 checks, the $50 checks, the $100 checks, the $1 PayPal donations, the $10 checks, the $15 checks. I really know that y'all gave me what y'all could have. I want to thank you. I'm happy because I do know there's people out there who care. And there's enough of you that when this next fundraiser gets started, if we're not successful with St. Paul's, 
I will be sure to keep you guys close to my heart and I will make sure that you will be honored within the walls of the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. It's not a question of if we're going to build this school. Get the if out of your mind. There is no ifs. There's only a question of where it's going to be and when it's going to come into fruition. So brothers and sisters, continue to support me. Dr. Umar Johnson School.com. We got eight more days, eight days. We can do this. Don't stop. Tell everybody in your family to make a donation. Everybody in your church, everybody in your lodge, your frat, your sorority, your block, your community network, your revolutionary organization. Uh, we need the donations and we still have time to raise that two and a half million dollars for St. Paul. So please, please, please keep on giving. And if we don't make it, don't you dare get discouraged. We're going to keep on pushing until we find a home for our boys. We owe them that much.